Caprita Benicillo. Here. Okay. George Fantasia. Here. Yoli Garcia. Here. Diego Pacheco. I'll assemble for it. Yes. Okay. I constitute by the 12 members established form at 6.13 p.m.
position that in 2004, uh, City of Los Angeles voters uh, passed, which would authorize uh, a series of bonds of about $500 million uh, for projects related to uh, health, community pollution, bacteria and trash, uh, specifically to work on uh, water recourses, beaches, ocean, and open spaces. Uh, so because of that, uh, they've been able to create a lot of new uh, park space and enhance existing parks uh, in green like sidewalks uh, that has long contributed to improving water quality. So because of that, right now, uh, of those $500 million, that bond, right now there is a final $60 million that's going to be appropriated citywide uh, to look into improving uh, park space that focus on uh, water quality issues. So as of right now, there isn't a specific project within Phoenix CD14 that's tied to those $60 million. So we're asking you know, the community you know, if you have any suggestions of any specific projects that you want to suggest and work on, please contact us at City Hall or here at the Los Cerritos Institution uh, Center. And again, these projects I need to focus on uh, to protect the rivers, lakes, beaches, the ocean, conserve and protect drinking water and other water resources, uh, looking at how to reduce flooding and use neighborhood parks to decrease uh, pollution runoff. Uh, we able to capture and clean up uh, and use uh, stormwater. Uh, so that's uh, something that's uh, available within the proposition. Uh, another item that the uh, uh, council office has been working with uh, Council District 9 is uh, the issue of uh, street vending and street food, which is something of, of, uh, that's very uh, So today, uh, Council Member Jose Guizar and Council Member Curran Price introduced a motion to review a regulation, or lack thereof, actual regulations in relates to street vending. Uh, our office believes that regulating street vendors is better than pretending that they don't exist at all. We know that they're there, so because we're there, we need to look at ways and look at sensible regulation that will in, in itself protect health and, and public safety when it comes to street vending, uh, but also look at ways that we can enforce and, and work and legitimize some of these people that actually are there to make a living. But uh, our purpose there is to find ways, to find a solution to this street vending uh, problem, not only that protects them, but also protects current restaurant owners uh, in the city. So it's something that we're working on, the motion was presented today. Uh, we hope to uh, get a report back soon. Uh, if you have any specific recommendations or questions, please contact our office uh, as it relates to a specific issue. Uh, another issue, just one item that I want to bring up, uh, as it relates to hot shops, uh, you know, or uh, miracle marijuana dispensers. Uh, so the attorney is enforcing uh, a lot of shops or nuisance in the city, uh, please let our office know if any of them open up within this area, let our office know, and we'll go ahead and follow this up with the city attorney's office, which is their investigation and prosecution section to look into this matter. Uh, we've given the city attorney's office a list of all these uh, marijuana dispensaries pot shops to the city attorney's office to look into them. Uh, at the moment, we haven't been able to hear any updates as it relates to any investigations. Uh, once they have taken legal action, that's when we'll be informed and uh, advised in terms of what will happen with some of these uh, MMDs. So again, just contact our office if one, because it has happened when some of them just pop up, and we don't know. So these are formats you, you, since you live and work in the community. Uh, let us know and we'll address some of these issues. Um, another item in terms of stormwater drains. Uh, we're in a 
ourselves in terms of cleaning up some of the drains, some of these stormwater drains that have been clogged, and if we're not cleaning them on a consistent basis, then that's when we have issues when it rains and when we're flooding, and a lot of issues going to come up. So please let our office know we're creating a, a list of, uh, of drains in the area that need to be fixed, that need to be cleaned. Uh, we don't want to miss any of these uh, uh, stormwaters that need to be cleaned. Please contact our office and we'll go ahead and uh, put that on the list uh, so we can work on. Um, something that just also occurred today, uh, the sidewalk dining program improvement. Uh, today, City Council uh, voted to support the pilot program that was uh, introduced by Councilmember Jose Lizar to assist businesses by expediting the process of obtaining sidewalk dining permits. Uh, pilot program uh, at the moment uh, is will go to a public works commission. Hopefully, we ratify uh, soon, and there will be a report back to talk about what this will mean. But in theory, what this will mean will reduce. Uh, the permit process and also reduce the fees for businesses uh, along the corridor here in El Sereno and citywide uh, to look at how we can offer uh, sidewalk, sidewalk dining in LA that will alleviate uh, a lot of the costs and we're working on that for the council office and if you're a business owner, uh, please contact our office and we will more than gladly
forth. So it was just a day uh, promoting safety, awareness, and we gave out candy and popcorn. So it was a pretty good event. We gave about over 500 bags of popcorn. Uh, but just from the count, just on that stretch, there were a little over 2,000 people that walked that corridor. So just the fact that we were there, presence, uh, fire department stopped by as well. So it was it was a way to promote public safety uh, at Halloween. I want to commend the officers of uh, Hollenbeck Station. The three that are sitting back there were patrolling pilots all night, and I really appreciate it. And I think it gave uh, the community a sense of being secure that night and being safe. And I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming out.
But when you have a, a, basically a heavy downpour and the water going into that system, basically you got a little Yellowstone right there to park. One problem is it's untreated stormwater. <coughs> Steve Morales, I'm the senior lead officer for Al Sabrina University Hills. And hello, uh, uh, Eddie, thank you. Uh, I sometimes came and told you that I'm not responsible for all of Al Sabrina, so what I want to do is bring two officers, uh, Oscar Cassini, my, my colleague, and John Pedrosa. Oscar Cassini has uh, Hillside Village, and John Pedrosa has uh, Herman, Monterey Hills, Rose Hills. Can I take it down, John? Lincoln Heights. A little sliver of Lincoln Heights. And just so that you guys know, it's 88 years of experience with the Los Angeles Police Department. Of course, about 80 of it is here exclusively in Hollenbeck. This is a weekend here in the monster share of our career. Okay? And, and we're proud to be here, by the way. We like being in this position that we're at. Okay? Anyways, uh, I'll give you a prime update. I did an analysis yeah. of the last four weeks from uh, October 6th to 11-2. Uh, and again, this is by far uh, the vote of Austria. Uh, between those two times, the four week period, I had uh, six violent crimes. Of those six violent crimes, one, one was a uh, attempt robbery when the person was arrested, and I had uh, five aggravated assaults. Of these five aggravated assaults, there was only one uh, shooting victim, and that occurred on the 4300, right around the 4300 block of South Huntington Drive, kind of by Nate Sticker. Uh, there was solo admission interacts with right there. And that was gang related. I uh, had something to do with the 18th Street gang. In that same period, I had uh, 31 property crimes. And of those 30 property crimes, what's always killing me has to do with their vehicles. I had 13 GTAs, which are Grand Theft Auto, and I had 7 burglary theft motor vehicles. So 20 out of my 31 property crimes are vehicle related. And just to give you a, a, a whole uh, Big picture of the whole year, 
year to date, from January 1st to today, in uh, my car, I had 158 stolen cars. 158. Last year I had 138, 136. So that's the only, that and my Furby vehicles is the only where, place where I've had increases. Everything else, aggravated assaults, year to date, I've had 62. Last year I had 85. So that's a 27% uh, reduction in aggravated assaults. Which to me is a little bit more important than having cars broken into, although the cars broken into is what's my killing tail. Uh, last thing, in uh, all, all back, we've had, that's who, Bowl Heights, Lincoln Heights, Elsinore, 753 stolen cars. We've got a lot of cars. Okay, 753. So what we ask, what we ask, if you have a, a targeted vehicle, which is an older Honda, Toyota, to secure it, and I've said this before, we have clubs that will issue to people as long as you have that targeted vehicle. If you have a Lexus, you're going to get one. Okay? <laughs> if you have an older Honda or Toyota or something like that, get a hold of one of us, and, and we'll uh, provide you with a, a club that was donated actually by the uh, Well High School Club. You said from October 6th to... That was October 6th to November 2nd. Right, I'm take questions. Uh, yeah, I just uh, was wondering if there's any, any updates on the suspect that uh, robbed um, you know, the most of the metro PCSs and the water store and that stuff in Rose Hill. Is there any yes, update on that? Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it was a serial robber. He was targeting metro PCSs and little strip malls and things like that. Not only in the El Serena area, but a little bit in like, the Highland Park area. He probably did about eight of them, and then he was captured on video and kind of figured out who he was after a while. Actually, he went to TJ, and the, uh, he tried robbing some lady, and she did the Kung Fu on him, and he did the crap out of him, seriously. And then the TJ beat, he got a hold of him, and they took the crap out of him, too. He's in Mexican jail, slash uh, a hospital. <laughs>
where we're at right now in this home now. Uh, within the last few months or so, we've been working heavily with uh, several city companies such as the Abolition of the Water and Power, NTP, Edelby, Nagel, Kimber, Time Warner Cable, Strong Capital, and Gas Company to come up with schedules and continue the communication work. Uh, that area is approximately heavily you know, involved in the MIA. Contractor and city inspector will have traders in Bacon Rock and 